it going to take? So we'll look at that. And we'll also look at two cases the Supreme Court is going to hear this week. Uh, right. Number one, the Muslim ban. And we're going to also look at the reports um, right. about uh, uh, voter redistricting in Texas, as well as the House Farm Bill. You know, recent reports and studies have shown that an alarmingly high rate of black infant and, 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 and uh, maternal mortality is afoot here in this country, okay? You know, all of these incidents, they indicate a halt in the progress made towards a more equitable society. We gotta, you know, we gotta take a look at that. We absolutely have to because my baby does not have a really good chance to even get grown. I mean, come on. You know, this week also begins the final debate on whether or not the Trump administration can admit or implement their Muslim ban. You know, the Supreme Court is going to hear these arguments. And what does the ban seek to do? Yeah, that's what we really need to talk about. And I know that Jennifer is the right person to talk about it with. We'll also talk about what is the likelihood that the Supreme Court will side with the Trump administration. You know, the court is divided 5-4 in the Republicans' favor. Had not the Republicans stonewalled President Obama's uh, 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 nominee to be on the court for um, about a year, you know, then it would have been 5-4 in Democrats' favor. But they did that, you know, and that was real ugly and uncalled for. But nonetheless, they did it, okay? So now we got a court that's leaning towards the right. Will they side with the Trump administration on this? I mean, you know, this is, in my opinion, a ban on Muslims, a ban on religion? Oh, man, come on, you know the Constitution ain't going for that. We'll see if the Supreme Court does. We'll also uh, talk about how that voting has long been lauded in this country as a basic cherished right. What is the potential impact on voting rights, considering the current case in front of the Supreme Court on redistricting get it right now. in Texas? So we'll talk about all of that, man, a whole lot more right here with you at 877-532-5797. Again, 877-532-5797. Dr. Ronnie L. Jackson, who's the White House physician, has withdrawn his consideration as Secretary of Veterans Affairs, saying the allegations against him, against him have pretty much become a distraction, so he's just going to step out. Also, Scott Pruitt, he's the embattled head of the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, he began his first of two appearances before the congressional panels today in what is expected to be a day-long grilling over recent allegations of ethical infractions and lavish spending. You know, Mr. Pruitt insists he has nothing to hide. Well, we'll find out. That's why, why we have hearings. So let's just all just, you know, calm down and let the hearings uncover what they're going to uncover. Also, President Trump is saying that his uh, longtime lawyer, personal lawyer, uh, Michael Cohen, uh, and his troubles, they don't involve the president. They don't involve Mr. Mr. Trump. That's what the president is saying. He acknowledged that Mr. Cohen is representing him. Okay, in connection with the Stephanie Clifford uh, case. And in case you don't know who Stephanie Clifford is, she's the porn film actress who is known commonly as Stormy Daniels. Okay, and she's asserted that the president has had an extramarital sexual relationship with her. And her attorney is, you know, he's saying, listen, I'm happy, you know, he did the interview because now he's fessed up that this guy did do work for him with Stormy Daniels. You know, and helping to defend him against Stormy Daniels. So I want to know, what was the extent of his work? Did he pay that $130,000 on behalf of President Trump there? Yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, boy. And Ben Carson's making the news. You know, his HUD proposal would raise the rent for millions in public housing, man. Millions and millions of family who are living in federally subsidized public housing. You're going to have to pay a little bit more for rent under President Trump's proposal. You know, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, that's HUD. You know, they're asking Congress to raise the rent that's paid by these residents to 35% of their income from 30% of their income. You know, talking about trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip, man. Well, we'll see, you know, if Congress goes along with it. You know, for those people living in this public housing, they know firsthand that elections have consequences. And Cosby's jury, they're diving into his defense, and they're, they're diving into these witnesses' testimony, so we'll find out what's all happening with that. we got a lot of ground to cover, folks. 877-532-5797 is the number to join us. Again, 877-532-5797. When we come back on the other side of this break, which is rapidly approaching, 
I can't wait to talk with Mary Pat Hector, the National uh, Youth Director of National Action Network's Youth Move, about how much do black women really matter in our society. I mean, I, I saw the video of the policeman taking this woman down. You see her clothes coming off, man. At least go get a tablecloth or something. You know, should male cops, you know, get that heavily handed with female cops? I mean, this woman was borderline disrobed in front of witnesses and in front of, you know, patrons at the Waffle House there. You know, Waffle House and uh, all of these places um, that are having problems lately, they really, really, really need to check up. Did the, they really have to call the police for that? I mean, you know, she was just eating there with plastic utensils, and the, the employee tried to charge her for using plastic utensils. Couldn't you have resolved that without calling the police? Now, look at what you have done to your employer, Waffle House, who has long had, you know, problems, man, you know, in dealing with, you know, the public relations. They've had problems for, 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 for decades going back with, particularly with racially charged things, you know, things that sometimes may never get reported in the media. And it's a shame that these companies have to suffer because they have employees that are so insensitive to the rights of other people, the humanity of their fellow man. They're so insensitive about, you know, dealing with that, that they put these corporations in jeopardy. And you know, Waffle House, last I checked, was a publicly held company, I believe. And it means it could be in your 401k or your IRA. So now you're getting hit in your investments because of what this insensitive employee, I'm gonna be politically correct about it. I could. I, I can think of a whole, whole lot of other uh, acronyms to describe somebody who would do something like that. Yeah, it, it, but uh, this is a reverend show. <laughs> it's not my show. It's not just a reverend show. It is the Reverend Al Sharpton show. 877-532-5797. And you must respect that, both myself and you. 877-532-5797. We're keeping it real, folks. We're keeping it real today. Andre Michael Eglishon in for Rev while Rev is in Tallahassee, Florida, attending the Enough is Enough National Coalition of Churches for Meaningful Gun Reform Legislation right now. That's taking place in Tallahassee at 12 noon it began. So all roads lead to Tallahassee, Florida, folks. Stay with me, Andre Michael Eglishon, 877-532-5797. Quick break, and we're right back with Mary Pat Hector after this. Oh, <laughs> 